I'm sure you've heard about our latest documentary on graduate unemployment. It's titled Job for the Boys. Imano Jivenu's piece details how young graduates are finding other means to make money. Watch this. <laughs> Ghana became the first African nation to achieve independence from colonial rule on the 6th of March 1957. There was much jubilation and hope that it would pioneer the way toward rapid growth and development for Africa as a continent. Freedom. 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 During this period, Ghana had a relatively good education system and a strong economy with foreign reserves of about $481 million and a gross domestic product GDP at par with those of Malaysia and South Korea. Ghana, like Malaysia, Singapore and South Korea, should have tapped into its rich resources to sustain economic development. But in the mid-1970s, Ghana's economy saw the beginning of significant deterioration such that by the early 1980s, GDP had reached its lowest in the history of Ghana's post-independence. This systemic worsening of the economy led to a significant fall in living standards and high levels of unemployment, especially among the youth. Our governments have always been aware that young people need to be supported in employment and so programs on youth employment go back as far as in Kroman's administration. Um, so um, he had programs that combined both economic and social issues for young people. He had the Young Farmers League for instance, the Young Pioneers. These were also a little, also political you know, um, associations as well. But they all showed evidence that we needed to pay attention to young people and to make sure that they were in the right positions in society. Thirty-year-old Oscar is one of the millions of unemployed young Ghanaians. He lives here at Konkomba Bolatop, a growing slum in the Greater Accra region of Ghana. My name is Oscar Tiflos Ibrahim Kakari, and I'm 30 years old, and I'm the first son of my parents. Oscar completed his tertiary education in 2017, but has never been in a long-term employment. While on the academic ladder, he never imagined that a search for job in a resource-rich country will be a daunting task. After graduation, it's been three years now, unemployed. Talking about this white-collar job. I've tried many possibilities, send my CVs to institutions, some to I send them online through Gmail, but I don't get any reply from them. So I have to just hustle. Hustle, um, as in find ways and means to feed. Sometimes I have to starve to just sleep. So that I hope, I, I hope that the next day I, I might get fed or something like that. So I have to sleep overnight. Or sometimes I have to drink water. Oscar struggled to put himself through school with support from a single mother. When I was in school, uh, secondary school, I was owing, I think, 1,003. And my mom took me to Shekai Sikwe. He was the one who paid for my institution in Tema School. And I got admission to Accra Poly. For that one, I have to work and go to school at the same time. When I was going to school, I hope that my certificate will grant me this white color job. But I think during the line, things changed. My sister has to drop out of school just, to, just for me to graduate. And after graduation, this sacrifice, after my sister sacrificing the education for me to graduate, after that, I don't get a job. It seems a bit stressful and depressed. When you go for an interview and they ask you, where do you stay? 
you don't have to lie, you have to say the truth. And when you tell them you are from Konkoma, Bolato, they have this bad perception that you are a bad boy. And in so doing, you don't get much youth to be employed. There are so many youth in these ghettos that are very smart. And they have, they have qualification, but due to some small circumstances, this is where life has brought them. The truth is, the country's economy simply cannot absorb him and millions of other graduates. He is pushed to the edge of society to slam it hard in the shanty town. He and his cousin survived by cleaning silver jewelry for a poultry. As for my junior brother, I, I was the one who advised him to use his handiwork, that is silver shining and necklaces making. Yeah, so just over there you see a small shop yeah that's how you benefit when we get a customer we wash one chain is 10 cd or 5 cd yeah we feed on that hand to man i can't go back to depend on my mom see since she's now feeding like two people now and i'm, I'm the oldest i need to prove something to them so i have to just come outside and hustle uh, a friend gave me this place to come and lay my head on. I don't want to go back home looking disappointed to my mom. Oscar is thinking of where the day's meal will come from. Just like other slum dwellers here, three square meal is simply a luxury to Oscar. Today, they are lucky to have a tin of milk to add to their regular meal. Statistics revealed from the Labour Force Survey conducted by the Ghana Statistical Service in 2015 and launched in 2017 indicate that the rate of unemployment as at the end of 2015 is pegged at 11.9% of the labour force. It shows that whilst 25.9% of the unemployed are youth, about 11.7% of the employed population are underemployed. Unemployment remains a global issue confronting both developed and developing countries. Unemployment has been found to be closely related to the lack of adequate education. Sadiq Adams is a broadcast journalist and a youth development advocate. His reporting career has allowed him the opportunity to observe with great concern the worrying trend of rural urban migration and youth unemployment. You cannot have an education system that produces, constantly produces graduates who come to sister home for 15 years and their expertise are going waste. You cannot continue to have over 60% of your labor force I mean, going about and wondering and not knowing exactly what to do to put food on their, I mean, on their tables. We have large members of the family in the villages who want to do farming but do not have the enabling environment to do. So they have to move to the cities to choke up the cities and then create a very, very unconducive country that we all live in. And this is what we have constantly been calling for, that the politicians who are at the helm of power need to design a very perfect system that other countries have also done. The streets of the central business district of Accra hold the livelihood of hundreds of Ghanaians. <laughs> 23-year-old Razak dropped out of school due to the inability of his parents to sponsor his education. Today, Razak makes these sandals for sale on the street of Accra. Uh, me, myself, you know, the, I just hustle from Taru to this, you know, so every day I have the hustle. You know, I don't get one day cry, they feel good cry, every day I have the hustle. Because when I start from school, you know, for the meantime, I don't come to school, I don't get anybody to help me, so I want to start hustle. I start hustle by myself. 
Uh, you know, the, I mean, the horse, uh, that's why I see myself. Uh, you know, when I, the, the moment I wrote uh, BC, you know, when I see my back, you know, I don't get nobody to help me. So I just start hustle. Uh, it would be better for me to hustle. So I can't say anything. The hustle is racing away the inside. He traveled from his village in the Ashanti region to seek a future in sandals making in the capital, Accra. Mm -hmm. The 23-year-old laments the infiltration of the market with foreign goods. He has lost many of his customers and gradually throwing him out of business. One for 20 Ghana. You go buy this thing, buy this. Charlie, you do and finish, you know, nothing the inside. I still now you get some small things in the inside. That's why I have seen you. This, this thing there, nothing the inside, oh. Nothing the inside. When I get a job to that, I stop this. So this one you go. You see, is it not a good job? It's a good job by <laughs> the material. They, 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 those people bring the materials, you know. This one, the course, you go buy this, you buy selection, you buy bona, you buy this. The moment you do, I'm finished, you know. Nothing the inside. So you are doing for them. Those people go bring the goods, you are doing for them. You know, those people go buy, bring the letters and the bonus from uh, China, you know. Nothing the course. So you can't buy them. You want to do them small. You know, nothing the inside. When I get a job today, I'll stop them. You can't not be traveling to Libya, to, to, to Singapore, to China, to go and import things and come back home and sell to people who can produce the same. I think that we are in a very, very bad situation. As a country now, we must begin to think that if we do not wake up now, the future will be very, very, very bleak. It's already bleak. It's, it's very gloom. And it's a point in time that Ghanaians, and especially the youth, who we, we coin as the future of the country needs to take the future up. The COVID-19 impact on the economy has only made things worse. Most businesses are not in the position to hire. Due to this coronavirus outbreak, uh, the factory I was working with, they laid off some workers and I was, I was part of them, so I have to come home. I was a machine operator, yeah. Um, we, we used to print on these sachet rubbers, these pure sachet rubbers and these plastic bottles. Yes, yeah, so I was the one who printed on it. Ghana, just like many African markets, has become the dumping ground for all kinds of goods from developed countries, all in the name of free trade. The things that you know, help us, especially the China goods. The other uh, this one, if somebody can hold it, ah, you ask, you know, it be China. Until you go talk, uh, you understand, uh, until you buy. Uh. Established and large companies have taken all the bright spots, flooding the market with their finished goods, which are much cheaper than those manufactured locally, forcing many local industries to close down. Because of this situation, people like Razak and his friends are left frustrated and disillusioned as it becomes difficult to compete. Uh, you go buy leather, when you have a small thing, you mark out, you don't get nothing. You go buy this one, you go buy this, you go buy this. The moment you finish, you know, you don't get nothing. So you, yeah, you don't get nothing from the, Maybe someone will come and buy them. This one will be 20 Ghana. The whole price will be 20 Ghana. You can sell them 25, when you get 5 CD. That to be a Shisha. The China, they can do this type of China. This Ghana, they can do the same type. We are selling 20 Ghana. You can sell uh, China, you can sell 10 CD. Ghana is known for its high dependence on imports for domestic consumption since gaining independence in 1957. The country was ranked 78 in terms of imports in the world in 2013 and 2014. Its dependence on imports is also signified by the increasing negative trade balances. The weak economy has pushed the country towards several IMF directives of restructuring euro bonds and Chinese loans with an interest payment sucking practically all of Ghana's export revenues. Ghana has an abundance of non-renewable natural resources such as cocoa, gold, timber, bauxite, manganese, industrial diamonds, and more recently crude oil, but with little economic growth. 
The present question for many individuals such as Razak, Oscar and the millions of Ghanaian youth is whether our natural resources are a blessing or a curse. Our leaders misuse our natural resources in, in certain ways that when, like uh, example, cocoa, when they import and export, the money they get, they, they, they invest directly into political businesses. Political business, and sometimes during this election, they dash out, they, they bribe some of the youth just to cause violence during uh, elections. And I think instead of bribing the youth, why don't you find that individual a job to do? Instead of bribing them, why don't you give them work to do? The government can come up with any structure or any, any terms of building a, a manufacturing uh, company that can help the youth to be employed. If you build a manufacturing company, you can train them in this in specific, uh, specification to help them to operate on machines, maybe cutting or carrying off loads. In so doing, they have something to do. Due to high cost of accommodation in Accra, Razak cannot hire any decent place to live. If someone rent for me, I would like him, but me myself, no, I can't. Uh, maybe Accra, you want to go and rent a house with a cost, you know, you can't. Always, we did, we did sleep outside. All the time, we came, we did outside. So until we sleep, you know, maybe one or two, uh, two Maybe some people are roaming about. We are sleeping in the market too. I'm just about women about until they be quiet, until you sleep. Thank you so much for staying here on the AM show. I'm Bernice Abubedu Lassa. I've been joined by Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete, and uh, he has a, a program with Litina Travel and Tours. There's a trip to Israel. But I'm just learning from him in our pre interview chat that he actually studied economics at the London School of Economics because I was asking him his thoughts on the, the clip we just played about graduate unemployment. So I'll just take your quick thoughts on that. So if you didn't know, Dr. Lawrence Tetter is actually a trained economist. So your quick thoughts on the issue of graduate unemployment. I, I think that we have a big problem in Ghana. Our choices of subjects also plays a very big role what kind of employment we get. Everybody wants to go into marketing. They want you to go to some of these courses that everybody is doing. And so we lack expertise. Nurses don't have problem with employment. No, in Ghana they do. They don't. They do. They do. They don't. That's always a backlog. That's what I'm saying. That to some extent, to some extent, okay. Ben is there are certain subjects that when you do, it's you are easier. able to get a job. You know, if you look at the landscape of Ghana, Higher percentage of our landscape is agra. The lands are there. If somebody goes seriously into a Greek, you will not lack work. A lot of people have left the urban area, uh, the, the rural areas, and if you come to the urban community and the jobs they want to do, everybody is craving for. So let us learn in choosing our subjects. I, I read economics. I specialized in international relations. I had a chance to work with a lot of international organizations. Of course, I went to Ivy universities. The, Budapest University of Economic Sciences that I went to in Hungary and the London School of Economics in London are all Ivy schools. And I can tell you that over the years I've noticed that the choices of subjects we choose in school determines even how quick we get jobs. So I will encourage that moving forward, our young men and young women should not just rush into subjects everybody is doing. Mm. There are certain subjects when you get to do, getting work becomes easier. Because whether we like it or not, in the trend and the environment we live in, unemployment will be an issue. Mm. And so we must wisen ourselves up to be able to get into areas of subjects that can get you a job. Like you are happily working for joy news. <laughs> <laughs> <That is. laughs> Interesting.